What if I told you there was once a diesel engine so perfectly engineered that it succeeded in literally every application imaginable? An engine that powered offshore racing boats to victory, hauled combines through wheat fields, propelled solo sailors around the globe, and even kept street sweepers running in small towns across America. An engine so universally capable that more than one million were produced in Peterborough alone, plus significant volumes around the world. The Perkins 6.354 didn't just succeed, it conquered. For over three decades, this single-engine design dominated industries that had nothing in common except one thing. They all needed reliable power, and they all chose the same answer. But here's what makes this story fascinating. How does one engine become the Swiss Army knife of the diesel world? How do you create something so perfectly balanced that it works equally well in a tractor, a racing boat, and a transcontinental expedition? This is the story of engineering perfection meeting perfect timing. Historical Context and Development The late 1950s were a pivotal moment in diesel engine development. While diesels had proven themselves in heavy industrial applications, they remained crude, single-purpose machines. Agricultural diesels were designed for steady-state operation. Marine diesels were built for constant RPM, Industrial engines prioritized longevity over everything else. The idea of one engine serving all these markets seemed impossible, but the 6.354 was designed in the late 1950s with a revolutionary concept, a compact 120 brake horsepower unit where the auxiliary drive was taken from a small jack shaft driven at engine speed from the timing gears. This seemingly simple innovation would prove to be the key to universal adaptability. The engineering team at Peterborough understood something their competitors missed. The future belonged not to specialized engines, but to adaptable ones. The jack shaft extension allowed auxiliaries such as compressors, vacuum pumps, or hydraulic pumps to be driven at engine speed, mounted off the cylinder block and driven through a simple, flexible coupling. Even more revolutionary was the introduction of direct fuel injection, using a toroidal chamber in the piston crown rather than the aeroflow chamber in the cylinder head. This wasn't just an incremental improvement. It was a fundamental reimagining of how diesel engines could operate across different applications. The 6.354 wasn't designed to be the best tractor engine or the best marine engine. It was designed to be the best diesel engine period. Golden Age Section Production started in 1960, with the engine being a hit for most applications. Within months, it became clear that Perkins had created something special. The engine's versatility was almost supernatural. It seemed to excel in every application where it was tried. The agricultural market embraced it immediately, with versions appearing in everything from compact tractors to massive combines. Industrial applications followed, as manufacturers discovered that the 6.354's auxiliary drive system could power hydraulic systems, air compressors, and generators with unprecedented efficiency. But it was the marine market that truly revealed the engine's extraordinary character. The marine market proved especially attractive, with inclined versions of the engine being produced to fit below cockpits. Ratings of 150 brake horsepower for general use were available, with much more for offshore powerboat racing. This is where the 6.354 story becomes almost legendary. Perkins established an enviable position in offshore powerboat racing in the late 1960s. Think about that for a moment. The same basic engine design that was quietly powering farm tractors was also winning high-speed offshore races against purpose-built gasoline racing engines. The 1960s saw Perkins' marine engines winning consecutive titles in the Paris six-hour race, with both the 4.99M and T6.354M finding favor with drivers in the offshore powerboat racing scene. The versatility was breathtaking. Morning on the farm, afternoon on the racing circuit. 
technical brilliance section. What made the 6.354 so universally capable wasn't magic. It was methodical engineering brilliance. The jackshaft auxiliary drive system was the master stroke that enabled infinite adaptability. Unlike conventional engines where accessories were driven directly from the crankshaft, the 6.354 system allowed for modular power takeoff tailored to each application. For marine applications, this meant driving alternators, bilge pumps, and hydraulic steering systems. In agricultural use, it powered hydraulic lifts, PTOS, and air compressors. Industrial applications could tap into the system for generators, cooling fans, or specialized machinery. One core engine, unlimited configurations. The direct injection system represented another leap forward. This resulted in more power from the same swept volume while improving fuel economy. But more importantly, it provided consistent performance characteristics across the engine's wide RPM range, making it equally comfortable at agricultural idle speeds or marine cruising RPMS. The modular design philosophy extended to every component. The easy adaptation of the engine design and the ready availability of many conversion parts made the 6.354 family the product of choice for customers both large and small. Need more power? Add a turbocharger. Different mounting requirements? Swap the bell housing, marine cooling, different heat exchanger, industrial generator duty, specialized governor. It was like having a universal donor in the diesel engine world compatible with everything, rejected by nothing. Challenges Rise Section Success brings its own problems, and by the early 1970s, the 6.354's very popularity was creating challenges. With hundreds of thousands of engines operating in every conceivable condition around the world, durability issues began to surface that hadn't appeared in testing. During this period, many changes were made to the engine to improve its durability, including revisions to the cylinder head gasket, valve train, and piston assembly. Further changes, which included modifications to the cooling system, signaled the DOT series of engines. The DOTs weren't just production codes. They represented continuous evolution under pressure. Each DOT series addressed specific field failures discovered through the engine's massive global deployment. DOT 1 engines addressed early head gasket failures. DOT 2 improved valve train durability. DOT 3 tackled cooling system problems. DOT 4 refined piston design. It was engineering through brutal real-world feedback. But the bigger challenge was external. The world was changing around the 6.354. Environmental regulations were tightening, demanding cleaner emissions. Fuel economy standards were rising. Noise regulations were becoming stricter. The very universality that made the 6.354 successful was becoming a liability. You can't optimize for everything when regulations demand specialization. By the mid-1980s, the 6.354 was overtaken by the new 1000 series, designed around the same basic one liter per cylinder, but with radical changes to achieve tighter emission standards and meet demand for metrication and the needs of a more sophisticated market. The challenge wasn't technical, it was regulatory. The 6.354 could be updated, but updating a design optimized for universality meant compromising the very thing that made it special. Transition section. Rather than fighting the inevitable, Perkins made a brilliant strategic decision. If one factory couldn't serve every market optimally, they would create many factories, each optimized for local needs while maintaining the core 6.354 DNA. Production of the 6.354 was not restricted to Peterborough, as license agreements were signed around the world during the 60s and 70s, production of the engine began in Mexico, Argentina, Turkey, Peru, South Africa, Brazil, and the USA. This wasn't just manufacturing outsourcing. It was brilliant adaptation strategy. The 6.354 became an engine locally available to customers across the world, using some parts supplied as kits from Peterborough. Each regional production facility could optimize for local fuel quality, 
operating conditions, and regulatory requirements while maintaining parts commonality with the global 6.354 family. Mexican production focused on agricultural applications, with modifications for high-altitude operation and dusty conditions. Brazilian facilities specialized in industrial and marine versions for South American markets. Turkish production emphasized construction and heavy equipment applications for Middle Eastern export. This global network created something unprecedented in diesel engine history, a truly universal power plant with local optimization. A farmer in Peru could get parts for his 6.354 powered tractor from the same supply chain that served offshore racers in the Mediterranean and industrial generators in South Africa. The DOT series evolution continued through each production facility, but now with regional variations. A DOT 3 engine built in Brazil might have different cooling specifications than one built in Turkey, but they shared fundamental architecture and most components. It was like having regional dialects of the same engineering language. New engine applications were appearing all the time as the easy adaptation of the engine design and the ready availability of many conversion parts made the 6.354 family the product of choice for customers, both large and small. The global network meant that specialized applications could be developed regionally and then shared across the entire network. This transition period from the mid-1970s through the 1980s represented the 6.354's mature phase. No longer the revolutionary newcomer, it had become the reliable standard, the diesel engine that everyone knew would work, regardless of the application. It was during this period that many of the engine's most famous applications emerged, from solo circumnavigations to industrial installations that would run continuously for decades. The 6.354 wasn't fighting change. It was adapting to it, maintaining its core strength while evolving to meet new challenges. Legacy and Modern Reality In 1996, the last 6,354 engine came off the assembly line. After 35 years of production, over a million engines built in Peterborough alone, and countless more produced globally, the most successful medium diesel engine in history finally reached the end of its production run. But ending production didn't end the story. Many of these engines are still in use today, proving the ability of this multi-purpose engine to give reliable, economical service wherever power is needed, walk through any working marina, visit any vintage tractor show, or explore any industrial facility with decades of history, and you'll likely encounter a 6.354 still doing what it was designed to do. The marine world, in particular, has become a living museum of 6.354 engineering, Offshore powerboat enthusiasts still seek out original racing engines, while recreational sailors value the reliability that made the 6.354 the choice of solo circumnavigators. The same engine that powered Sir Francis Chichester's auxiliary systems during his solo round-the-world voyage continues to power weekend sailors today. Modern restoration projects reveal the engine's enduring appeal. There were 111 versions of the 354 Perkins, a testament to its adaptability, but also a source of fascination for collectors and restorers who appreciate engineering excellence. The 6.354 proved something that seems almost impossible today, that you can create a single design so fundamentally sound that it succeeds everywhere. It wasn't the fastest, the most powerful, or the most fuel-efficient engine in any single application, but it was good enough in all applications to become legendary. The Perkins 6.354 Proof that sometimes the best solution isn't specialization, but perfect balance. A million engines, countless applications, one legendary design. Subscribe for more stories of engineering that change the world.